And let's say we want to mirror this arrow. All you have to do is hit add and then go down here to the repeaters and hit mirror. So now you have the mirror and you have the arrow. You want to make sure you tap the arrow. Then you can use your gizmo and you can separate them like this. Instead of the mirror, let's say you want to change this to a radial. So now we have a radial here. If I turn it to the top, you see that they're all radiating out. And of course, you can adjust the radial. So it's just going to make copies on the outside, you know, radius of the center. So if I'm looking at the front right now, the front just shows the arrows kind of in this position. But let's say you wanted them to be uh, in a different position. You can actually tap on these. Right now, you see the green radial four. That means there's four of them, and the green is the axis. So the axis is uh, up and down. So if we're looking at it from the top, then you can see that axis. But if we go to the front, let's say you want to change it a different way. You can tap that, and now the radius, the radial is uh, the red. Z, then it's like this. So if we're looking at the top, it's like that. If we're looking at the front, it's kind of like this. So, which is kind of cool, actually. And then, of course, you can still adjust these. So you can go to arrow, and then you can adjust how these look. Let's say you want them all pointing in the center. Let's get it off snap, and you can just rotate them so they're all pointing in. And actually, we can probably use snap. And that'll give us cleaner. Ooh, these are a little off though. So I'm not sure if we should, there we go. We can kind of adjust them a little bit. Oh, and also don't forget that if you go to the radial again, you can add more. You can add five, you can add more like this. And then you can just go to the arrow and you can move them around. Let's move a different one. You can move them around a little bit. And get some interesting things. I kind of want to make them curve. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use move. Make move fairly big. Uh, I don't think I need symmetry. So I'm just going to focus on the one. I don't like that. And then I'm going to tilt it. Just farting around. I created this entire 3D sculpt on my iPad in a program called Nomad Sculpt. I love 2D character design, but being able to turn them into 3D has just been. Welcome to my 3D character workshop in Nomad Sculpt. I'm Drug Free Dave, and I've been drawing traditionally forever, right up until the time I discovered digital art with Procreate. The ability to design characters in 3D has been a game changer for me. It also ignited passions in art I didn't even know I had. I've been able to export my 3D sculpts to Blender for more in-depth work, and I've also started creating physical art that I can hold in my hands with resin 3D printing. This class is geared towards those of you who know the basics of Nomad Sculpt and just want to get better at 3D character design. Here's what we'll go over in class. Opening and preparing our scene for sculpting, importing our reference image, Locking out our character using simple shapes or primitives, tailoring the shapes to exactly what we need, adding details like teeth, tongue, and fingers, simple scene lighting and painting techniques, post-processing to make our art ready for render, or to send to other applications. If you're not sure if you're experienced enough to take this course, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I'll go over each step I'm making and why I'm making it. If you've been working in Nomad for a while, you'll still discover new things to add to your arsenal from my workflow. I continue to learn new aspects of the program and more efficient ways to sculpt with each and every project. Speaking of projects, 
In the next video, I'll go over what we'll create in class, and I'll also expand on ways that you can switch things up and really make it your own. Once again, I'm Drug Free Dave, and I look forward to seeing you in class.